Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe from Out of Proportion, and today I have for you a tutorial on how I did the 3D text for my latest video, the typical action movie trailer. Um, Alex Santago in the comments asked how this was done, so let's take a look at what it looks like. Alright, so we're going to be dealing with creating the 3D text, animating it, and compositing it in After Effects today. Um, I like 3D text a lot because it looks a little more professional than something 2D and After Effects sometimes. Um, and it's a lot easier to make it look more professional than it is with 2D text. So, today we're going to be using Blender 3D, which is a completely free 3D program. Um, you go to blender.org and download it. Um, for any operating system you have on any computer. Well, not any computer. You need to meet the requirements, but nearly any computer. Um, I definitely recommend checking out Blender um, because it's absolutely fantastic for freeware. Honestly, if you're going to be making movies at all um, and you want to do any kind of 3D work, I would definitely recommend Blender, especially if you're going to buy a program. If you haven't used Blender and you're planning on buying something like 3DS Max or Cinema 4D, don't. Because if you get into Blender and you have no clue what you're doing, um, which you probably won't because it's pretty complex, um, I would not spend thousands of dollars on something that you would be even more lost on. So I would recommend getting Blender first, and then if you get really professional with things, get a program like 3ds Max or Cinema 4D or Maya or something like that. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and get started here in Blender. Um, I'm using 2.6, the latest version. You can download that on Blender website. Um, so if you've never used Blender before, I'll just go over some quick basics of how to use it. Um, this isn't going to be a user interface tutorial. If you're planning on using this as a reference, I would definitely recommend checking out someone else's tutorial on how to use Blender um, because I'm just going to give a quick rundown and then jump into how I actually did things. It's a bit of a steep learning curve using Blender, but it's definitely worth it. Um, don't expect to go into it and be able to, in minutes, do anything really that great. Because honestly, the first couple things you make in Blender are they're pretty terrible. Um, that's just a kind of rule for everyone. So, here we go. This is the default scene. You see we have a cube in here. We move along our axis here. Um, this is a light, the default thing. Nothing really too special going on here. Um, main controls in Blender are done using the keyboard and the mouse. You want to have a hand on both of them when you're using it. The number pad especially, if you press 0 on the number pad, you go and look in on your camera view. Press 7, you get a top view. Control 7, you get a bottom view. 1, you get a front view. Control 1, you get a back view. 3, you get a side view. Control 3, you get the other side view. Um, you can use 4, 5, and 6, I'm sorry, 4 and 6 to rotate. You see 6 rotates around and 4 rotates around the other way. 8 and 2 do the opposite, they rotate up and down. And 5 changes the perspective. So as you see here, if I zoom in by scrolling, um, everything is just looks like you're actually on the plane with it. If you press 5, you appear to be kind of more omniscient, and you're not really there. It's like an overview of things, so you can model better. Um, something I'd recommend, if you're on a Mac, like I am, and you're using a magic mouse, um, the problem is, Blender uses a scroll wheel to rotate in 3D space like this. The Magic Mouse doesn't have a scroll wheel. And actually, even if you're on a regular mouse, sometimes it's a bit tricky because zooming is also scrolling, so you might want to rotate and instead you zoom in on something. So, this can easily be fixed. You just go up to your user preferences, and on the input tab, select emulate 3 button mouse. See, if I turn this off and I press Alt, nothing happens. I can't rotate at all. And my scroll wheel doesn't work either. But I come up here, back to user preferences, turn it on, and now I can rotate. And this is good so you can view all aspects of your thing. Um, there's lots of different keys. I'd recommend printing off a sheet of keyboard commands from a website like Blender Wiki, which actually has the entire manual of it on Blender's website. Um, some simple things like G is free move. Um, if you don't want to move it freely though, you want to move on a specific axis, um, you can simply zoom out and then you see this is your Z axis, I think. This is the Y and this is the X. I'm not sure which ones they are actually. We see. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, the main difference or complication I found with using Blender for the first time was the kind of dealing with the 3D space. It can be a little 
little odd to kind of understand how things work. Even though we operate in a 3D world, um, when you do something in After Effects, for the most part, it's in 2D with basic 3D. Um, whereas this is completely full 3D. So we have a cube here, and it's not just a 2D image. This is actually, you press R to rotate things, you can see this is a full, fully 3D cube. Um, so this is the basic scene that loads up in Blender, but this isn't exactly what we want. So we're going to select all the things. You press A to select all your objects, A again to deselect them, and we're going to hit delete and get rid of them. Um, so we're doing text in Blender. So you press spacebar, and it'll bring up your little kind of search thing, and you can type in things you want. So let's type in text. And as we see down here, we have the option to add text. You just enter on that. So here we go. We have some text in Blender. Um, let's go over in our, what is this? This is the properties tab here. And we'll go over in the text and we'll center this. So now we can see we can put this right in the middle there. And we want to change the text. We don't want it to say text in our thing. So you press tab and that goes into edit mode. Object mode is basically you view the whole object as it is and you can move it around as a whole individual thing. Normally when you have, say, a cube, let's go ahead and add a cube here, and you press tab, you come into object mode and you can actually edit each individual vertice or maybe like a side of the object and this is how you want to do most of your um, kind of modeling using edit mode. Well actually only using edit mode, you can't model using anything else. We don't need a cube today, we're just using text. So. We're going to go ahead here, select our text, go into edit mode, and then we can just type like normally. So let's say we type out example. Let's make it all caps for this, because this is an exciting action movie. So it's nice and centered there, as we can see. But we don't really like this font that comes just plain with Blender, so we want to change that, make it a bit more exciting. So in your text tab, or object data tab, which is basically just the text tab in the uh, properties window, we can come down to the font options and you can load up regular, bold, italic, bold, italic. Um, we're just going to do regular. Um, so basically you hit this little folder here to open up things and then somewhere on your computer you can find your font, either put it on your desktop so you can easily find it or just know where it is before. Um, and we're going to use a corporation font, which is one I downloaded for free. And that's what I used in the video. It might look a little more familiar now. So here we have our font. But as we can see, if we kind of rotate down here, it's still 2D. There's nothing exciting about this. This might as well just be something we've done in After Effects. So, let's make this 3D text. Over in our text tab, we're going to come down here, and in the geometry tab here, we're going to change our extrude. As you see, as we drag this up, our text has extruded far too much, actually. So, we're going to change this to 0.30. There we go. So we zoom in here. Now we can see we have some pretty nice 3D text. So if we rotate, it's actually in 3D, which is very nice. And if we want to move it, let's say on our Z axis here, we can slide up and down and our perspectives will change, which is very nice. That's mainly what makes 3D text so nice, is it looks like it's actually coming out of the camera at you instead of just like a static image coming towards you. This is all very nice, except the edges look a little sharp, so we're going to go ahead and add a bevel here. Um, so as you see, as you add a bevel, it's just like it would be in Photoshop or After Effects, except it's in 3D space. So let's go ahead and add a 0 .30 bevel to that. Oh, that's a bit big. 0 .030. There we go. So now our text is looking pretty good. Except the only problem is, we don't have a camera to view it. So, if you've made a camera in After Effects before, this is pretty much the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and type in camera here. And we'll add a camera, and here we have a camera. And this essentially allows us to see, or film, what we have. Um, so if we come down here and move the camera up, let's say, so now we press 0, and we can see what the camera sees. Zoom out a little more, and there we go. So now, if we go ahead and render our image, we press F12 if you're on a PC. Uh, Mac, even the FN shortcut for F12 doesn't work, so you just have to come up to the Render tab and render the current image. And we see we have our text, except it's black, because this is like the real world. There's no lights in here right now. There's absolutely nothing, so it's pitch black. And the gray you saw there is actually nothing. That's the world. If we render it with alpha like we're going to, then we actually have a pre-matted image and we don't have to do any complicated keying or anything like that. And it's really nice. So, 
let's come here and let's add a lamp type in lamp and I like to use the hemi lamps here they just make things nice they do a good job of lighting I find so press 1 and go to the front here and let's move this up and lighting is actually the hardest part of this whole thing you can spend hours and hours trying to set something up and you might make no progress from when you first do it um, but it's absolutely the most important part of making 3D look good as far as I'm concerned. So now if we render this image we see it's a bit too bright there. We can see the shadows as well. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do here is our text is just it's got no no color to it right now. There's no texture on there at all. So we come over to the materials tab and we're going to add a new one. And the diffuse color is the color of the overall text. We see we make it black here. And specular is how um, reflective something is. It makes it look like there's sharp edges. So we want the intensity of this to be up to 1. We want it to be white, like light shining on it. But the hardness is the uh, nice part of this. If we drag the hardness down, we see it looks like it's kind of soft, like it might be made of a different material. If we drag it up, it looks like it might be made of plastic or metal or something. So I usually set my har uh, hardness about 200. Now if we go ahead and render this, we can see the lights are still a bit too bright here. So, like I said, lighting is a really tricky part, so you want to move these further away. Maybe down a bit and change the rotation on them. Until you start getting a nice look to your text. It's getting there, so why don't we turn the energy down to 0.3 on both of these. Usually it seems to work quite well. The image. Now we're starting to get there, you see? The middle bit looks fine, but you can see the edges are still just a little too bright. So this is basically like lighting a real scene in real life. You can't just plonk lights down and expect them to look great. You have to mess around with them and you can use different lightings depending on what you want your objects to look like. Alright, as we can see here, I've gone ahead and lit up the scene. I ended up with a total of five lights, I believe. Yeah, I have four Hemis and one point over the thing, and our final rendered image looks like this. As we can see, it looks pretty nice here. Um, a tip if you're going to be using Blender, um, I like to turn on ambient occlusion. And now this just kind of adds a realism to things. It makes them not perfectly colored. You can't really see it on the text because we've changed the lighting and things. But if you have like a static background, it changes it so it's not all one color it falls under different kind of shadows and things like it would be in real life because nothing's ever just a flat color in the real world. Um, so on our text here, we're going to change a few more settings. Um, why don't we come down here and in our materials tab, let's go ahead and turn on the mirror setting. So this basically changes the reflectivity of things. So if you have an object in the thing, you can have it interact with this. Let's make it 0.5 change that a little bit, make it 0 0.1 actually. Alright, let's go ahead and render this and see what it looks like. That looks pretty nice. Um, you won't actually see any reflections on this, but if you have already taken a um, image of the reflections of your background scene, say you were camping in like a helicopter or something and you wanted the metal on the helicopter to reflect the scene behind it, you would take a picture of what's behind it and then you would have that basically reflect off the text so it would blend in more. Um, if we go ahead here and add in, let's say, a cube, since everyone loves cubes in Blender, and we have this here, as you can see, if we move a bit further forward here, there we go, and now we render this image, you can see the cube is being reflected in the text. So if you wanted to have a 3D object interact with the text, it would look very nice. Um, for our intense purposes, it's basically just so you can see the letters on the side of other letters, and it looks like it's made of some kind of glossy plastic type thing. So this is looking pretty nice now. Um, now, what we have to do is animate it. As we see, we just have our text here, and if we were to render the image, it just shows up like this. But if we were to render the animation, um, it would be 250 frames now, which is a little excessive. We don't really want it that long for this. Um, but basically what you want to do now is animate it. Animating in Blender isn't that hard, actually. It's basically like doing it in After Effects, except you have to know the shortcuts for it. So we come up here to our window thing and change it from default up to animation. And now things look a little crazy, um, but don't worry about that. 
press zero again to get in your camera and you can see your text here so here is our timeline just like in After Effects um, and you have another view window up here so you can see how things are moving in other dimensions this is your keyframe window essentially the keyframing is just like it is in After Effects except to keyframe you press I and here you see you can lock down the rotation um, the location, rotation, scaling, or you can do two of the three or all three at once. Um, so let's go ahead and lock down the rotation and scaling. And let's say we want to go 60 frames in the future. And we want our text to move forward a bit. Let's press 0 and see where that goes. That's a little far. Um, if you press G and then the axis you want to move it along you can actually drag straight from that without having to go out of the perspective and drag it from one of the arrows on the side so if I wanted to move it in the X I press G X and now see I can drag it like this but we don't want to do that we just want to have it move forward in the Z axis so now we go ahead and lock our rotation scale again now it's in a new position and we can see in between them we have the change in the frames here it's just like keyframe and after effects I said you play this and we can see our text is moving forward. So if we go ahead and render out our final one, see what it looks like. It looks quite nice there. Now we can get out of that. And let's change our text. Let's see how long does this take. Looks like a pretty good amount of time. Let's lock this down to 100 frames. And then up to the 100th frame. Let's go ahead and move this just a little further forward. Tiny, tiny bit. And now we'll lock that again. So now we have text that moves forward and then slowly moves forward again. All right, that looks nice. Rendering in Blender isn't actually that hard. Um, all you have to do is come over to your Render tab in the Properties menu. Um, and you can come down here and change all your options. So we want this to be full high definition 1080p, so we make 1920 by 1080. Make sure this is 100%, so it's basically making this the 100% image. If you put this to 50, it'll be like 960 by 540 instead of 920 or 1920 by 1080. Um, you can change your frame rate here. So you can make it 60 if you want to be able to do slow motion with this, so you can do custom. I don't know actually how high the custom amount goes. I wouldn't recommend doing something ridiculous like 12,000 frames a second. Um, because you will never ever finish rendering that um, probably so I like 24 frames a second standard movie frame rate um, I, if you want to turn on motion blur if you have something that's moving fast you can do that but it'll basically just blur it and it makes a copy of that um, if you're going to be blurring anything though and especially in this situation since we don't have a background and we don't want one since we're going to be comping in our own um, come down here and under the um, render options and output change RGB which it is normally to RGBA this is basically red green blue and alpha this is just red green blue so it'll only render out the colors of the image um, the alpha channel in this one it basically makes it so this background doesn't exist in Blender 2.59 I think it was QuickTime was now able to support alpha so if you want to render it out as a movie you can with alpha now um, but I still like to do what I used to have to do in Blender before that which is render out as a PNG which basically means each individual frame of the movie is rendered out as its own separate PNG. Um, I think it's like portable network graphic, I'm not sure. That supports transparency. You could do TIFF as well, um, but I just like PNG. Blender automatically renders to a temporary folder in, I think, the C drive. I'm not sure exactly on that, so don't quote me. Um, but it's tricky to find, especially if you're on a Mac. So you can change your Blender location. What I like to do is just click on my desktop. I have a folder here since it's each going to be an image, and you don't want 100 images on your desktop and have to select them all. So put it in its own folder, and it makes life a lot easier. We'll call it example here, and we'll just hit accept. Um, if you have any complicated physics work going on in Blender, which we don't right now, and if you do, you probably shouldn't be watching this tutorial because you probably know more about Blender than I do, um, you can bake your simulation first which basically cuts down a render time by doing like the calculations and rendering and stuff like that ahead of time um, as of now everything looks good so we can go ahead and hit our render animation button here or we can go up to render animation as we see each frame is going to render out and does this a hundred times which actually won't take that long compared to how they could be um, if we had anything really serious going on as we can see in a couple frames here we'll see it start getting bigger 
I like to watch the first 10 or so frames just so I know that it's rendering out what I want it to and it hasn't had some kind of error. If for some reason you um, realize you've done something horribly wrong, like you misspelled example or you just have a bad lighting or one of the letters is odd or something, you can hit escape and it'll cancel your render. And that goes for rendering the image as well. If you went up and rendered just a solo image and you want to get out of there, hit escape and you'll go back to the menu. Um, as for now, I'm going to let this render out and then we will come back and do some comping in After Effects. Amazing. 